Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you for joining the 99 Names of Allah session again today. For those of you who are in the space today, for those of you who are watching this live, and for those of you who are uh, going to be watching this in the future at some point, inshallah. Uh, this is our 16th session. Alhamdulillah, we are, we are cruising along and uh, just, just getting just before the 50th uh, name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the names last time that we had covered were Ar Raqib, Al Mujib, and Al Wasi. Ar Raqib covered the watchful, the vigilant, the meticulous observer, but also the protector. Al Mujib was the one who hears. And also the one who, but more so the one who responds, the one who replies, the one who reciprocates and the receptive one. And al was this all-embracing, endless, all-reaching and boundless uh, divine name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these names just helped us not only help us feel that not only are we being looked out for, that someone is looking out for us, but that someone is also not just there in the shadows, that someone is there who we can speak out to, who we can ask to, for help, who we can ask for things, who will respond to us, who we know will respond in some way, shape or form. And also that there is someone out there, that same uh, entity that is there in an embracing fashion, in a loving fashion, and that will be there when things get overwhelming. So these names help us lift up that we're not alone. At their essence, they lift up that we're not alone, that we have someone that will be, that will hear us, someone that is watching out for us, and someone that is there to hold us and to hug us and to really embrace us when the goings do get tough. So we keep these names in mind as we look ahead to our next three names, which are Al-Hakim, Al-Wadud, and Al-Majid. Three very beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that um, many people know in different regards and that are uh, brought up in the Quran and different traditions here. But before we start with those, as always, we will do a recitation of the Asma'il Husna, the 99 names. Before I recite, just a quick note that I had come across here that when we recite the divine names, when we recite the divine names and let them grow out of our heart, and instead of just like we just keep them in a repeat on our ear, again, that's that's and, and our minds, that's that's definitely one entry point, and that's probably the primary entry point. But when we recite these divine names now, we want to let those same seeds be planted in our heart. Let those same seeds plant in our heart because our heart expands. Our heart expands. And as our heart expands, we've seen here in our heart softens. It becomes more receptive to the divine. It becomes more receptive to the world around us. So our love, our affection, and our humanity begins to grow when our heart softens and our heart expands. And out of love for Allah, we then learn how to develop a proper kindness, a proper love, and proper care towards the creation. So these names have a very powerful effect when we think about reciting it. It goes beyond just like a hymn or it goes beyond just a repetition. It is much more akin to a healing, is akin to a spiritual, physical, and emotional and holistic healing. So let's keep these in mind because the secret of creation does lie in Allah's, uh, in the knowledge of Allah and the qualities of Allah. So when we know the qualities of Allah, Allah and we know Allah, we begin to know not only ourselves, but the creation and that because everything emerges from the one divine source. So with that, let us go ahead and begin and share. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. Inshallah, we will go from there. Bismillah. All right. And as always, as you need to be comfortable, as you need to inter get into a space where you can just hear these names, you can see these names, you don't have to know them all, you don't have to memorize them all. We're just, we begin our space with this remembrance of Allah and all these beautiful names and so many more. So Bismillah, let us begin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Huwallahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim al-Malik al-Qudus al-Salam al 
مؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر الخالق البارئ المصور الغفار القهار الوهاب الرزاق الفتح العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الحكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الحليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الحفيظ المقيت الحسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواسع الحكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الولي الحميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المحي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقتدر قدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقم العفو الرعوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار النافع النور هادي البديع الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور. So we begin in the in these divine names and today, as I mentioned, Alhamdulillah, we'll be covering three very beautiful names: Al Hakim, Al Wadud, and Al Majid. Al Hakim being the all-wise Al-Wadud being the one who loves unconditionally, the endlessly loving, and Al-Majid, which is the glorious, the magnificent, and the celebrated, and the gracious. So let us begin, inshallah. Al-Hakim. Al-Hakim, as I mentioned, is the all-wise, the source of all wisdom. So anytime we see these names of Allah as the most just, the most merciful, the most uh, wise, any of these names, we also uh, understand that to be the source of those things, that these streams of different attributes, they have a common source, and that Allah is not only the most wise, but from Allah comes wisdom, from Allah comes justice, from Allah comes love, from Allah comes mercy. So we identify the source there, and you don't just put it on a hier hierarchy that, oh, we're, we're not that wise, and Allah is the most wise. It's like, no, you can, you have access Access to becoming more wise because Allah is that fountainhead of giving these attributes. And so the root of this name is shared with another one that we've covered, Al-Hakam, which was the judge. And that, that root, in addition to the meanings that carried along with that of justice, of impartiality, of being able to have a clear mind and distinguish between different things and different matters, this uh, this root also has that connotation of wisdom, has that connotation of a sage presence, has a connotation of intelligence and intellect. And wisdom, as we know, just from our uh, human interactions and our human knowledge, that it carries so much more significance than we might be willing to lend it. It, you know, when we think about someone who's wise or practices wisdom or carries it, this, this wisdom that they practice, it carries a love and a unity in their heart and their spirit. And so there's something different about them, someone who's truly wise. And, and, and what, it, what happens is it reflects in their actions, it reflects in their words, especially in their words, because we'll, we'll, we'll find these like quotes, a dime a dozen on Google from sage folk who have come in the past. But just to really think about not, uh, not only knowing how, but how the, uh, the, the state of the creation is like, you know, being able to know beyond what is really just on the superficial people who are wise really are able to assess the situation holistically, and they're able to then make a 
accurate assessment of at least what is going on and, and a very cautionary except um, a very cautionary assessment but most importantly in this process they holistically know about the uh the things that they are being wise about or have to arbitrate between or whatever it may be but it's not just for humans it's also for all of creation so they're mindful in that aspect and al-hakim is that practice of wisdom the capacity to attain wisdom uh, on a practical level just on a very practical level and this is the wisdom that we express every day in our lives in our daily acts in our behavior and in our interaction so it's a, a very personal type of wisdom so when we think of Allah as al-hakim we think the all wise and we sometimes think of an over transcendent uh over transcendent god that is just all wise and we know nothing but it's actually it, it's actually a very a much more intimate aspect than that it is a type of wisdom that is much more personal it's a type of wisdom that uh, we have access to as well that, that we have access to these sparks so it's not just you know this this hierarchy and in no inaccessibility in between that there's actually much more that's there and when paired with other names some of the names that are paired in the quran with uh, al-hakim um, you have like al-aziz you have al-alim these different words help then denote a different connotation like al-alim which was you know the, the all-knowing you have uh, intellect, uh, intellectual reflective knowledge combined with wisdom so you have a, a this, this even more sage wisdom but it's powered by this intellect and you have with al-aziz you have the, the powerful but you have you combine power and capacity for wisdom so you see that uh, when they're mentioned in the Quran together, you see how much more expansive these get, but how they are also paired together. You know, you have power paired with wisdom. You have knowledge paired with wisdom, because so many times when we see these outlets for power, or they see these outlets as tools for us to get ahead or things that we measure ourselves by. How educated are we? How powerful are we? But Allah shows that those are uh, just in conversation with, in combination with wisdom, that a proper way of bringing both of those, they bring about that. But you can obviously abuse one and not the other, but Allah shows in this example that with these things also comes that balance with wisdom because you know what to do with these things. And so wisdom is really uh, indicative um, for those people who deal with things in an inappropriate manner. And they see things for as they are and for what's really behind maybe the outward. And so the decisions and actions that stem from wisdom as opposed are, are, are you know, more cautionary than, than those opposed, than those that are impulses or just these vain desires, or they're just, you know, from our, our, our just, you know, our, our carnal passions or whatever it might be, it just might be an impulsive decision. Um, they, these actions speak for themselves, the, the ones that stem for wisdom, because they, they understand that. They understand our own personal shortcomings as well, and as opposed to just imposing something that we think something should be. We, they're able to evaluate it. And this is a wisdom, again, that I, I speak of that is a divine wisdom. You know, obviously in our human world, even those who are wise, they do have their own flaws. That, that's absolutely true. And this is kind of lifting up that, that peak of wisdom. We have that peak of wisdom that we find not just in the Prophet Sallallahu but in Allah's uh, example here. In the sense, there's that pure wisdom, but we see sparks of it in some people throughout history. And so this isn't to say that you know, we, we use one of these and we measure every single person who's who's technically de deemed wise, uh, because sometimes we may come out disappointed. But this is to lift up that that pure, refined wisdom that is there. And so wisdom really is an act of beauty. It's an act of sensitivity and it's a act of truth. It's an act of truth that brings, brings about peace, comfort, harmony and relation and connection. Uh, wisdom is really to cultivate sensitivity in our thoughts, cultivate sensitivity in our words and deeds on that level of perception and expression. And it helps liberate our consciousness from that, that those clutches of negativity and just ill thoughts and, you know, all the negative things that we might have uh, either about ourselves or the world or suspicions that we may have here and there. It helps us to clear that slate. And when you understand human nature, to understand human nature and meet, to meet it with sensitivity really means that we've elevated ourselves and others to really higher spheres of beings because we're, we're going past the corporeal. 
we're going past the physical we're lifting up other people and then in the process we are lifting up ourselves so when we open ourselves to wisdom we open ourselves to a whole new world we move from that eye centered complex that we might develop and the limitation of just seeing ourselves to then seeing ourselves as a part of something greater and seeing the holy and seeing the divine and seeing the human in the world around us in the in the in both the human creation and the non-human creation and so we know human nature is complex. We know human nature involves many wounds and involves many different signs, many wounds for us personally, but also it's a very wounded world we live in. And when we're when we take on this wisdom, when we uh, aspire towards it, we, we find that wisdom helps lead people to the right place at the right time with the right words and the right deeds in harmony with the divine and in connection with the divine, not in separation. So as we conclude with Al-Hakim uh, Al here, we find that this name doesn't only bring forth wisdom, but that which comes from wisdom. When you're wise, you then have things that come and cascade afterwards. Things like truth, things like being subtle, things like being patient. All these things come with, when you think of someone who is wise, when you think of the, the added attributes of things, uh, something that comes with wisdom, you think of these things as well. So wisdom is that first step and it opens up the door for not just a whole encompassing knowledge, but proper, uh, just way of dealing with things. So many things come from that wisdom. And people who carry this really can uh, show that right path in times of doubt, in times of indecision, and in times of confusion, and really fill people's hearts and the world's hearts with a renewed sense of hope. They, they keep a steady sign, and they become those guides and become those lights. And so as we think about this name, as we think about uh, wisdom, we think about how can we internalize it, but not only that we it, it can be measured by however much we learn, however much we gain in this world, but it is really about how we know ourselves and how we know the world around us. And when we truly, truly know, when we peel back those layers, we begin to access wisdom. And then when we access wisdom, we begin to access true knowledge true power and true uh, relation and connection. And so wisdom belongs to those who are embedded in the inner and the outer uh, existence, in the internal uh, part of yourself, but also in the outer, the corporeal, the physical world. And it comprises that conscious and acquired knowledge and it helps at the end of the day, strive for balance. So we keep this name in mind as we, uh, as we go into this next name, which is covers a beautiful aspect of Allah. Al-Wadud. Al-Wadud is a very famous name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the one who loves unconditionally, the endlessly loving. I always talk to my friends uh, who are Christian. I work at a Christian seminary and, you know, the, they're like, does God, does God in Islam have anything, you know, about like love? Like, because, you know, God is love and all this stuff. And uh, it blows my mind that so many times, you know, we will talk about Allah. Yeah, Allah has 99 attributes and love is one of them. But how, how often we sometimes miss over that, that we just list it as an attribute and we don't see the internal aspect of it, the holistic aspect. Because as I've mentioned for all these names, you have the external aspect. You have the external aspect of Allah is the most loving. You have the external aspect of that, but then you have the internal aspect of Allah created all of creation and in being al-wadud in this holistic love also created the creation. And so there's a, there's a deep type of love that is there, which we oftentimes just brush over with the four letter word. And there's so much more that's there. So uh, Al-Wadud, to go through this here, it's the one, uh, he's the one who loves unconditionally, the endlessly loving, and it brings this name already. Whenever you say love, whenever you say Al-Wadud, there's, there's something about this name that brings a feeling of already being kind of wrapped up or en like enveloped in a kind of kindness, a mercy, and a sweetness. You just think about uh, so many warm feelings when we talk about love and loving, and you just think of whether it's your spouse or your partner, or your um, your uh, your loved one or your mom, dad, any anybody, your child, whoever it might be, a sibling, you just think and you, if you associate them with being loving, you just think about all these warm feelings that come with that. And it's this intimate divine love in the heart. Oftentimes we get our love confused in, 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 in our personal society, our context that we will just think love is the superficial, the, the, the thing that's on the outside. But this is a love that is really inside and loves you for who you are, what you are, what you'll look like on any day, pandemic, no pandemic, anything like that, uh, and, and really get at your heart. And so this love 
of al wadud brings about a holistic love expressed through all different kinds of mediums, not just the physical intimacy, not just the outward, but a true inward that you begin to love someone. The root of this word has the meanings of love, liking, fondness, to want, to desire, uh, to make friends, to become, to be, uh, to be friendly, to have friendship, to strive for love, to show love or affection, and to be devoted, to have this affection. You see just how deep of a meaning this word has. So when we translate any name of Allah as, as, as something, you can see how, how you know, we're just at the top layer of that ocean of meaning that is just behind that word. So those who follow this name really bring about friendliness, really bring about harmony and love among people, but also within themselves. They also bring about this love for themselves because they know from whom uh, they came from and who they belong to. They know that recognition with Allah, but they reflect it on the world because Allah is loving, so you will be too. We talked in the first uh, in the first day of class that how Allah is merciful and how Allah loves mercy, so be merciful as Allah does love these as well. And uh, Al-Wadud is that love that really penetrates into the depths of our heart. It works hand in hand with compassion and love helps to then forgive. Love, whenever we forgive, whenever we, we, we talked about this uh, with Al-Ghafur, uh, whenever we uh, forgive, we develop and we open up to connection. You know, love rises through that connection and it helps heal that wounded heart. We were talking about this yesterday in a group that oftentimes the work Allah does on our heart, the work, uh, the spiritual work that is done, uh, sometimes there's these attributes of Allah that seem a little bit difficult, that seem a little bit harsh, um, that seem a little bit strong, but we recognize that regardless of how we've gone through, our hearts will go through a, some different stages of hardness or some different stages of separation. So just think about your heart. Think about all the things that we do that might take us away from Allah. We have our jobs. We have our work life. We have uh, just, you know, our, our personal lives. We have so many other things that these added layers and sometimes some of these attributes really have to like a uh, like an archae archaeological ex uh, you know excavation they have to dig deep initially they have to dig deep initially because they know there's something down there but they have to use the big tools to get there and then as soon as they take out the the big layers that are there as soon as they get close to the heart you see archaeologists do this with big dinosaur bones or like different excavation sites or any any ruins they start using toothbrushes <laughs> they start using very small polished little uh, q-tips things like that and so thinking of Allah is getting that uh, the separation material out with the heavy lifting and then when Allah is right near our heart using al-wadud as like that toothbrush using that care that compassion to really do some minor polishing on the heart and to really clean it up but you should see how much of diligence that takes from the one doing that so we sometimes get a little bit put back by some of these stronger names but we see that they're they work in in tangent with one another and in combination with one another. And so as I mentioned that this love also brings about forgiveness. So when we do forgive, we not only access love, we also find ourselves giving love to people that Al-Wadud also then draws us gently because it draws us that gently uh, in, in a gently sense and lovingly towards Allah and, our, and it fills our heart with Allah's light, and it makes us aware of that unconditional love. I'll read a quick hadith Qudsi, a hadith narrated by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but but actually narrated from God, from Allah uh, to the Prophet, and then directly there. So it's, it's done when it's uh, spoken, it's in the tense of Allah speaking. So my servant comes closer to me through the deeds which I love, and I've, and have been, and have put into their being. And my servant always uh, comes closer to me by doing good of their own volition until I love them. And when I love them, I hear through their ears, see with their eyes, take with their hand, walk with their feet. And when they ask, then all their pleas are fulfilled. You see that this loving helps to kind of make this unity that, that, that is there. You, you really see that Allah uh, loves this love. Allah loves this because Allah is the most loving. And so if we want to be loved by Allah, 
And we want to then come close to not just ourselves and understanding who we are. We want to come close to not only the ones who are our most loving, the people who we think of when we love, but the people who we think of, don't think of when we think about love, the people who might have abandoned us or the people we might have abandoned, the people who we are mean to, who are mean to us, the people who hurt us, the people who we hurt. We think about the people who we don't think about when this name comes to mind, because that's where a lot of that repair work needs to be done. And so we, in doing that, we then love what Allah loves. When we have that feeling uh, of loving, that feeling of loving is both healing for the loved and the lover. When someone loves you, when someone tells you they love you and they sincerely mean it, it creates a warmth in the heart. It makes you feel like you belong. It makes you feel like you're not alone. It gives you all these forms of validation. Now think not only is that healing for you, but then also for the lover to say that and for someone to respond back. Our, our society here makes a comedy of, uh, you know, I'm going to tell this person I love you. And then that person might just be like, oh, thanks. And it's just like, you know, they, they just shoot off and say something else. But just reflecting in that affirmation. If someone gives you that effort, saying you saying I love you to someone is, is a sense of trust, it's a sense of amana um, that, that you're giving. And if someone rejects that, it, it hurts, it hurts somebody. But uh, when it's accepted, not only does it make the person who receives it feel good, but it makes the person who gives it, who puts in that effort to say it, it makes them feel so much more better because it's like, oh my gosh, this person actually shares that feeling. And so love really can change us. Uh, Allah uh, Al-Wadud really gives us strength and clarity to make love stronger that we might love boldly and we continue to love boldly. And so as we close out with this name, we want to lift up meanings of walking the path of love, that this walking path, uh, walking the path of love really means to start on a journey to ourselves first and foremost. It's the path uh, of Allah that are manifold, you know, they're manifold. They're uh, all in so many different ways, shape or form, but the shortest and simplest one is by starting to love ourselves, by serving others, helping others, loving others, and not harming others, and ultimately forgiving others. Because forgiveness is dwells from a, a type of love. Um, and we want to cultivate this so that we may be forgiving and that in turn Allah forgives us. So as we close with the final name here, inshallah, Al-Majid. Al-Majid is the glorious, the, the glorious, the celebrated, the gracious. This divine name really manifests in dignity, in noble-mindedness, in venerability, generosity, and holiness. We think of the, uh, when we talk about the Quran, we say Quran al-Majid. Um, that's just glorious. You know, it's just something beyond what we, what we can define in words here. But the roots of this word have meanings of being glorious, being praised, glorifying, celebrating, illustrious, exalted, admirable, excellent. You get the point. Um, this name, when it penetrates us, it really allows us to experience so many different emotions from silence and amazement, sobriety, ecstasy, dumbfoundedness, enthusiasm, because it's just so like awe, it's, we're, we're awestruck. It's an overwhelming life force. Al-Majid is an amazement of the, at the unfathomable, a, a, a glorious divine power. Just imagine yourself maybe the first time you ever saw it, like the Milky Way or the first time you see like uh, something on like Discovery Channel or whatever it might be that you see like the entire stars. You see like, you know, the, 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 the Mars uh, rover. You see all these different things. Like, you know, you're just like at some point by whatever it might be. It might not be the stars. It may be something more uh, on this earth, but you are just taken aback. You know, some people see uh, a human in the in 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 a uh, in, in terms of just like in its embryonic stages, and it's just growing, and it's just like wow. Like you know, you just at that moment, you're just in amazement. That feeling is what that brings, and so this uh the, the the quran even mentions this in in surah hud um when the wife of abraham has is told that you will be expecting a child and you know she's already uh, she's already she receives the news like hey i'm like 90 years old like how am i gonna have a kid but she says uh and in response here uh or it's, a, it's actually the messengers respond to her you know when she says that would be a strange thing they says they say that verily ever to be praised uh, sublime and is is Allah and glorious is He that uh, you Allah, they have this concept of Hamidum Majid that you have this concept that Allah is Majid that He can do that those amazing things He can do these spectacles that are there and so uh, Al Majid really brings into our life gifts that amaze 
gifts that astonish and confuse us and allow a burst of bliss to emerge from our hearts. So gifts on the outside, but also gives us a creative inspiration of what we can do. So when we experience this, it flows deep, we flow deep into that gratitude of praise. And this quality really helps us to uh, become more generous, become more magnanimous and giving, become more kind and brave and having more uh, attentiveness to the world around us and being more ready to jump for doing what is right. So Al-Majid helps those who have become stuck in the material world, which I assume is all of us, um, become stuck in the material world. And sometimes we lose sense of joy, lose sense of amazement. You can you can hear this by so many of uh, so many people that are just like, I've, I've had this job for X amount of years, I've achieved this much wealth, I'm not happy. Like, I'm just like, I, I'm, I'm in a, doing a good thing, like financially or according to the world, but I'm just not happy. And Al-Majid helps then activate something else, helps give a, a renewed spark. And when we can feel the wonders of this world and the universe and ourselves, we break out from this separation and we open the connection to the divine. So we go beyond just like being stuck and starstruck and like, oh my God, awestruck. We begin to access the divine as well, that we know that there's a creator behind this. We don't just say, oh, wow, what a sky. Oh, wow, what about this? Like we, we, we draw that connection to where it gave from, came from. We give the credit where it's due. And the beauty of this world, the beauty of allowing us to see that in this world is its diversity. It's the existence of these opposites and differences, multi multiple colors, multiple perspectives, all these things, something that uh, is very difficult to reconcile with, especially in our time and age now when we have such polarized society. But amid this diversity, amid this, these opposites, Allah becomes known. When you, become, when you come to know the exact opposite of you, when you come to know that which you deem the least of you or most separated from you, you begin to bridge a uh, stronger connection to Allah. Uh, you develop appreciation, gratitude, humility, and carrying this name finally is uh, carrying this name, our spiritual capacities and our perceptions deepen, our self-control increases, it brings relief and comfort, and it helps us remind ourselves that we are connected to Allah, and Allah is one that can do the most amazing things. So inshallah, we close with that, but we'll uh, do our dhikr and, and as the closing, and inshallah, we will uh, wrap up there. But uh, let us let us go ahead and start here for the sake of time. Bismillah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. We'll, and we repeat these names three times each. Al Hakim, 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 Al Hakim. Ya Hakim, 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 Ya Hakim. Remind ourselves that Allah is the only one worthy of worship, the only one of these attributes. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Wadud, 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 Ya wadud, ya wadud, ya wadud. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. And in the midst of all these attributes, we remind ourselves we're in the presence of Al-Majid, the glorious. 
المجيد 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 يا مجيد 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 The brothers and sisters we conclude with the la ilaha illallah as we remember these names and we remind ourselves of Allah and the presence here and we repeat this two times La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. So go and remember these names. Remember Allah as the loving. Remember Allah as the all wise. Remember Allah as the glorious. But remember that Allah created us and created the creation with these divine sparks. And these aren't things that are alienable to you. These are things that are a part of you. We just need to do the hard work to find them. Jazakallah khair for coming, especially on our earlier start. Inshallah, we'll see you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.